Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. This video is part two to my previous one about making Briar Rose's bodice. In the part one video, which was last week, I went through how I made the main structure of the bodice. And in this video today, I will cover off how I made the modesty panel that goes with that bodice. So in this time lapse, what you can see me doing is placing the organza overlay over the black satin fabric and I measured how wide I want my modesty panel to be and I cut out this piece of fabric. This is the shape that I was left with and I was just looking at how it looks in between the two side panels of the black bodice. Now the panel that you just saw was just one layer of black satin. I ended up cutting out another piece of the black satin, placing it over top of the original black satin piece and then placing the overlay of the organza on top of this. So I have two pieces of black satin fabric and then obviously the overlay of the organza on top. And I pinned all three layers together. Now because the black satin layers and the organza layer are very flimsy, I did need something else behind it to support it. For this I used some scrap fabric out of the original corset dress which was made from a basic cotton calico material and that's what I used to form the boning channels for the modesty panel. I aligned my cable ties which I use as boning along one of the edges of this fabric and that's what I used as a guide to cut out my rectangle for the boning channels for the modesty panel. Then I sewed down the long edge of this strip of fabric that I just cut out and this would form a rectangle tube thing. I then turned the rectangle tube thing right side out and this would remove any of the raw edges as they would be hidden within the tube. I pressed the raw edges down flat and then top stitched in the ditch along the seam um, of this tube. I also sewed either side of the seam that I just sewed and this would create the boning channels for the um, support for the modesty panel. So you can see here I'm closing off the bottom edge of this tube and this will stop the boning from sliding through. So once I had finished sewing the two boning channels I was left with this and from here I could insert my boning which I'm just using cable ties for as usual. Instead of sewing the opening of the boning channels shut just yet I just placed a pin in there to hold those boning pieces in and I went over to my two black satin fabric pieces and laid my um, boning strip on top of that and pinned that down as to roughly where I wanted it to be. I also pinned around the edges of my black satin fabric so it wouldn't shift when I went to sew the support strip to these panels. I then brought the whole thing over to the sewing machine. I closed off the top of the boning channels here and I sewed down either side of the boning channel strip to secure that in place. So that's what I did there. And then I also sewed along the edges of the black satin fabric and I did this very roughly just to keep that in place. Also trimmed off the excess fabric around those edges that I had just sewn. Next up is the organza overlay and how I am attaching this is doing, it's a bit confusing to explain but I am wanting to turn this to the right side and that way all of the raw edges will be encased. So imagine when you are sewing, let's say, a cushion cover or pillowcase um, and you sew all of the edges together and you've got the pieces of fabric facing right sides together and then when you flip it out, outside, outwards, um, you have the out, outer edges facing outwards and all of the raw edges are on the inside. So essentially that's what I'm doing with this 
overlay piece. So I am pinning the overlay piece to the um, wrong side of the black satin layers. I'm going to just treat those black satin layers as one now. And you can see that right now the overlay is on top of the boning support piece. Obviously I don't want this to show from the outside, so just imagine that once I've sewn all of, the, all of the edges together and I flip it right side out, the overlay piece will be um, against the black satin on the opposite side of this panel. I hope that makes sense. Um, I will continue the video clips and it will make sense as the clips roll through. So here we are and we are sewing along the edges of this modesty panel and for this I'm just following my pins. Um, I didn't really mark too well how I wanted this to look, um, just roughly the modesty panel shape that I wanted. So here you can see me just sewing down all of the edges of this modesty panel. Along the top edge I tried to follow the gold embroidery um, scalloped edge, so that's what you just saw there, and for the rest of it I just sewed basic straight seams. So here we go with the snipping of the excess fabric. Here's the top edge of the modesty panel, and as I said, I followed the gold scalloped edge as best I could. Um, so I'm just trimming as close as possible to this seam that I had just sewn um, to remove any of the excess fabric and bulk. I also trimmed down the straight edges of my modesty panel, and that's pretty self-explanatory, so I won't explain anything more on that. And one more thing that I did do was clip all of the corners so that when I turn this piece right side out, it will be nice and I'll have nice and crisp corners. Now you can see that the bottom of the modesty panel has been left open, so I can then turn this right side out. And this is what I was trying to explain before, um, but obviously you can see how this works much better by watching the video. And you can see at the very top edges, I'm poking those corners through and clipping the excess fabric at those corners really helps with that. So once the whole thing has been turned right side out, I am making sure that the top edge stays nice and crisp. So what I'm doing is pinning through the top edge and making sure I pin through that tiny seam allowance as well. Um, and I'm just making sure that the top edge aligns with that gold embroidery scalloped edge. Once I had finished doing the top edge, I pinned down the two edges of the modesty panel as well and this is the same sort of thing um, by making sure that the um, organza overlay and the black satin are meeting right at the very edge and pinning through the seam allowance that's encased within within this modesty panel and the same sort of thing to the opposite edge and so all three edges should now have pins in them and I am going to take this to the sewing machine and top stitch very close to the edge along all of these edges. And again along the top edge of the modesty panel I just followed that scalloped edge and for the straight edges those were just basic straight seams. So here we go with the almost finished modesty panel and what I'm doing is placing it in between my two um, side front panel pieces of the black bodice which was um, shown how I, I showed how I made it in my previous video. So now I need to figure out um, the where the bottom of this modesty panel will be. So I took my um, tape measure measured roughly four or five inches um, and that four to five inches is for the visible part of the modesty panel. Obviously I'm going to cut the modesty panel a bit wider um, so those wider edges will be hidden beneath the black corset bodice layer thing. Hope that makes sense. The other thing that I need to mark out is where I want the modesty panel to finish. So where I want to chop off um, the bottom edge 
because obviously right now there's just a bit too much fabric there. So here is roughly where I decided to um, mark the bottom edge of the modesty panel um, so you can see where those pins are and yeah this is what I am going to follow when sewing the bottom edge of my modesty panel shut. So I just sewed a basic round sort of edge along the bottom edge of the modesty panel and I just followed my pin lines for this um, and it's probably not symmetrical but oh well. <laughs> And then once I had sewn the bottom edge shut, I trimmed off the excess fabric like usual. And the very last step is to attach uh, this black satin strip of fabric. And this is to cover up the raw edge of the modesty panel and to tie it in nicely with the rest of the bodice. So I think the black edges really finish it off and tie it in with the rest of the black bodice. So for this um, I just cut out a basic strip of the black satin fabric, placed it um, right side of the black satin fabric facing the wrong side of the modesty panel and sewed all along that raw edge. So I aligned the two raw edges and sewed that all down along the bottom edge of the modesty panel and I also believe I did the exact same thing for the top edge of the modesty panel. So the bottom edge has been done and here we go with doing the exact same thing for the top edge of the modesty panel to tie the whole look together. And now that the top and bottom edge have got the black satin pieces attached, it's now time to trim off the excess fabric um, of the seam allowance so that when I turn the black satin fabric over, there's not too much bulk. And I also trimmed down the edge of the black satin fabric since there was just too much. I did not need to cut these rectangle strips this wide. And like I do with any sort of bias binding, I tuck the raw edge under and then flip over the binding to cover up the raw edge of the fabric. And with the corners I just um, sort of fold them down in various ways to get them looking as smooth as possible. Now keep in mind the corners of the modesty panel are going to be hidden um, beneath the actual uh, black bodice so it doesn't really matter how these look anyway. Obviously do the same thing for the bottom edge of the modesty panel binding and then I can bring this to the sewing machine, top stitch it all down and we are done. Sorry I didn't get any of that on camera but here is the finished modesty panel. I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I did try and keep the main design of the organza overlay um, to the center of the modesty panel, so where that flower design is, and I think that worked well with the rest of the bodice. So one more final thing that I had to sew was the headband for Aurora, or Briar Rose. Um, there also is a shawl, but I did not film the process of making that, um, so this is really the last thing that I did capture on camera. So for the headband, I just um, cut out this black satin strip of fabric. Words, gosh. <laughs> um, and I sewed down one long edge of this strip, right sides together, and then I turned this whole strip of fabric right side out. I used a pen for this to help me push the fabric to the right side. Um, yep, it takes a long time and you need patience, but it is doable. Anyway, there's not much else to explain here about the headband, other than turn the whole thing right side out, give it an iron, um, and hide the seam as best as possible. Um, and that's it, really. Tie that in the hair and we're all good to go. So here is the lacing for the bodice, which is just ribbon which has been folded and then top stitched down to make it a bit 
thinner so I'm just showing the close-up of that there and um, yeah that's really it for Briar Rose's costume so here I am showing all of the components so here is the main black bodice and this goes around the torso yes that's it <laughs> um, this goes around your torso like this and I'm using a bobby pin to thread my strip of fabric um, through all of the little ribbon eyelets of the bodice so this is my way of doing it um, I'm sure that you could also use a proper eyelet threader thingy I don't know what they're called but if you've got a bobby pin handy this is also great too so I start by threading it through one of the bottom loops and bringing that all the way to the uh, end of the strip of fabric and then I tie that off um, just in a basic tie uh, <laughs> like that and then I can start doing the zigzag threading of the rest of the bodice. Now I did not actually thread through every single ribbon eyelet, um, I only thread through every second one because doing every single one would be too much and I don't have enough lacing for that. So I'm just going to speed this whole clip up um, and you can see how the modesty panel starts to fit in in between the two front panels of the bodice and I'm like I said lacing up every second eyelet and I don't know why I'm calling them eyelets because they're more like ribbon loops <laughs> um, yeah and once I get to the top I just tie it off at one edge of the top and that is it we are done so here's a sneak peek of the finished outfit um, obviously do not have my wig on um, and I don't have the bag or the shawl but it is basically the whole outfit <laughs> and yeah that's it see you in my next video which will be I don't actually know what my next video will be but see you then and I hope you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you did and you can check out more pictures of this costume and my other costumes on my Instagram. Bye!